we all perceive the world differently. The same thing can be viewed from different angles and different perspectives. But some people's minds are so different that their perceptions are literally turned upside down. Take, for example, 43-year-old Sean Day. Cucumbers taste pink. Spinach tastes a rich, dark purple. I tend to avoid eating zucchinis because the color is a dull gray yellow, and I don't like yellow. Sean Day is from South Carolina in the United States and has a condition called synesthesia. Synesthesia is a neurological condition in which the five senses of hearing, vision, touch, taste and smell become mixed up. People with synesthesia may hear colours, see sounds or taste a touch. Experts believe there are more than 20 different types of synesthesia, but around half of all synesthetes have more than one type. Like Sean, who can see music as colours, but also taste food as colour. One of the first times he experienced his particular food synesthesia was in his teens, when he drank a cup of coffee. I took one sip and all of a sudden, wow! Right there in front of me, this very vivid, huge pool of oily green. And it just struck me, I said, that's interesting, I'm going to have to start experimenting with this. Sean tastes food like a normal person would, but he has the added benefit of seeing colour as well. Which means when he goes shopping for food, he's looking for different colour combinations as well as taste. Chicken gives it a nice light blue colour. Got the last thing I need for tonight, ice cream for the chicken. It's estimated that synesthesia affects 1% of the world's population. David Eagleman, from the Department of Neurobiology and Anatomy at the University of Texas in Houston, has been studying synesthesia for two years. Synesthesia is a harmless perceptual condition in which there's a blending of the senses. So, for example, one might experience colors while listening to music. So one can think about this mixture of the senses, like neighboring countries on the brain's map, where there's porous borders in between the countries. There are essentially two theories about what's happening in the synesthetic brain. So in one theory, you have increased wiring between neighboring brain areas, and that causes them to talk to each other more. In the second theory, which I favor, that wiring is already there in everybody. But in the normal brain, there's a balance of inhibition and excitation that keeps these areas from talking to each other. And it appears that what happens in the synesthetic brain is that that inhibition is not working, so the wiring is actually talking. Dr. Eagleman's research is one of the first systematic studies of synesthesia. He's principally interested in how changes in people's genes alter their perceptions of the world, and is studying synesthetes because their perceptions are so radically different. Today, Dr. Eagleman is exploring Sean's musical synesthesia. Sean, in this test, you're going to hear the sound of an instrument. And what I want you to do is use the color palette here to pick the color that most closely matches your synesthetic color when you hear that instrument. Dr. Eagleman is using 3D virtual technology to map the relationship between particular instrument sounds and particular colors. I know that I was experiencing it when I was five years old because I remember pulling out records because I wanted to listen to the different colors. But Sean's type of musical synesthesia does have its drawbacks. One thing that you have to realize is that you don't get to pick the color to whatever combination. So, for example, I might really like the sound of a certain instrument, but might really hate the color. For me, French horns. If a French horn is playing with any other instrument, its color doesn't go with anything else and it's really disturbing in a symphony or something like that for the French horn to all of a sudden come in. Ultimately, Dr. Eagleman is hoping to identify the gene for synesthesia. We know a lot now about how differences in the genome, subtle differences in people's genes, will lead to changes in their external features, such as eye color. But what's almost entirely unknown is how subtle changes in people's genomes leads to differences in the way that they perceive the world. 
So this is one of the first attempts to really get at that. What I'm doing is collecting up large families where synesthesia runs through the family tree. And that's how I'm going to close in on the gene for synesthesia. Sean has no wish to stop being a synesthete, but one day he might understand exactly why he has an appetite for chicken. And it's time for dinner. With ice cream and orange sauce. I've offered this dish to other people, and nobody has really wanted to take me up on trying it. It's actually quite good. So what I get in front of me is this oval shape, about this big, with different shades from sky blue. And it's really wonderful, actually. And it's already started to break up.